Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. On iTunes, one word, Dwyer Boxing News for our podcast. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let me just say, a lot of people are buzzing. I've spoken to some people who are buzzing about Janady Golovkin, right? He's viewed as a fresh new face on the world stage at 160 pounds, right? People are talking about him fighting Miguel Cotto and others. But what I want people to also understand is that there is an entire group of fighters that are being ignored by the popular conversation. Understand there's always a generational war out there and the old guard always wants to convince you that they're still the most relevant group. Right? Let's talk about the old guard for a second. Who's ruling the roost right now at 160 pounds? Understand Janady Golovkin is not a newbie. Right? He's a former uh, Olympic silver medalist who's in his 30s. Right? Understand, Peter Quillen is not a newbie. He's in his 30s. Understand, in a sport in which Marvin Hagler walked away from the sport at 32, understand Miguel Cotto is also in his 30s. Sergio Martinez is in his 30s. Aren't we forgetting elite fighters at 160-ish who are in their 20s. How come no one's talking about them? Let's talk about a couple of those guys. They're both unbeaten. right? What I want you to do right now is I want you to look in my favorites here on YouTube. You're going to see a video of Chris Eubank Jr., the son of one of boxing's great showmen, Chris Eubank, the man who to this day Joe Calzaghe is on record as saying gave him his hardest fight ever, right? A former champion who fought in big fights. Well, understand Chris Eubank's son, Chris Eubank Jr., is now making waves. He's unbeaten. There is a sparring film in my favorites of him sparring with a 168-pound champion, Carl Frotch. Let's just say at different times in the short video, both guys have their moments, right? I'm of the mindset that Carl Frotch got the better of Chris Eubank Jr. But understand, Jr. is just like Janady Golovkin, right? Big hitter, front foot heavy, flat footed. He doesn't quite punch as hard as Janady Golovkin. Who does, right? You have to go back to guys like Edwin Valero, quite frankly. Julian Jackson. But understand, Eubank Jr. packs a punch. He also has hand speed. In my opinion, he has faster hands than Janady Golovkin. Right? And when he gets inside and gets a guy up on the ropes, that guy can get stopped in the first round, just like Ivan Jukic just got stopped in the first round a few days ago by Chris Eubank Jr. Right? But the fighter who I'm really excited about a little bit more than Eubank Jr. is Southpaw Billy Joe Saunders. Now understand, Eubank Jr. and Saunders are both 24. It's going to be half a decade before they get to, you know, 30, right? It's going to be more than half a decade before they get to 30, right? So these guys have a lot of fight ahead of them. Understand, Billy Joe Saunders is so world-class that a guy he knocked out in the second round, Jared Fletcher, and look up Fletcher's amateur career. He's a decorated amateur, right? A guy who Saunders stopped in the second round is actually going to be fighting for the WBA middleweight title on August 9th against Danny Jacobs, right? Billy Joe Saunders has already been there and done that, KOing Jared Fletcher early in their fight, right? I believe if Saunders were to face Chris Eubank Jr., it'd be a great fight. Put me among those who, if these two guys fight in the next year, 
And if neither guy is knocked out before then or in a car accident before then, put me among those who believes that if they fight before July 29, 2015, I would take Billy Joe Saunders over Chris Eubank Jr. For a host of reasons. The first is Saunders has an excellent jab. It's excellent. He has the better jab between the two men. I think Saunders is better at pacing himself, right? Chris Eubank can go from 0 to 60 in the blink of an eye. He's explosive, but he can't stay at 60. In my opinion, Billy Joe Saunders is able to cruise at 50 miles an hour. I believe that steady beats explosive over 12 rounds. Let me also say, too, that they're at different stages of their career. Chris Eubank Jr. has never gone 12 rounds. Billy Joe Saunders has gone 12 rounds five times. Let me also say that I believe in the slow rounds, right? The rounds where one guy isn't pummeling his opponent up against the ropes, like Eubank just pummeled his last opponent. Right In the slow rounds where the guys are circling each other and throwing punches, I believe Billy Joe Saunders wins the slow rounds because he'll be going 50 in the slow rounds. With Chris Eubank Jr., in my opinion, it's all or nothing. I was very impressed by the ending of Saunders' last fight against Blondorama, right? a fight he had this last weekend. Take a look at the footage. Saunders, a southpaw, right throws a right hook he notices that it lands on his opponent the next 10 seconds show you why Saunders is special he fools around a little bit comes right back with another right hook it's the second right hook not the first it's the second right hook that ends the fight Right? He's adaptive, reactive. I don't get the feeling he's a guy entering the ring with some favorite punches that he's just trying to set up and throw. I believe he's a guy who is reading his opponent and is throwing what works. Guys like that think more and do more than their opponents. Right? I also think defensively he's much better than Chris Eubank Jr., one man's opinion. Right? But Chris Eubank Jr. will often, like Janady Golovkin, be naked. Right? Both of these guys fought Bradley Price. You'll notice in the footage of Eubank against Price, there are times where Eubank is naked and he's just trying to get by an upper body. Right? Now that might work for great defensive fighters like Pernell Whitaker and Floyd Mayweather. Let's just say I don't consider Eubank to have their reflexes or their understanding of angles. Understand a lot of the times when you see guys looking naked and just bobbing their upper body, they're at an angle where they already know you can't throw certain punches. When I see Chris Eubank naked against Bradley Price, he's right in front of Bradley Price. Right, let's just say when Bradley Price faced Billy Joe Saunders, Billy Joe Saunders isn't naked like that. Right, to me, Billy Joe Saunders is playing angles better than Chris Eubank. He's turned to the side. He's a bit off at the side. Right, in my opinion, he seems to know what he's doing more than Chris Eubank Jr., now, I'd like to see Billy Joe Saunders in the ring a bit more. I believe his last fight was his first fight in several months. But make no mistake, you need to write down these names, Billy Joe Saunders and Chris Eubank Jr. Because these guys, if they continue, will be challenging for titles very soon. And understand, the guys at 160 are a little bit vulnerable. Right? I don't like Peter Quillen's volume, or should I say, lack of volume. The problem with Miguel Cotto is he's a daredevil, right? With 
really no experience at 160 apart from beating Sergio Martinez. The problem with Sergio Martinez is even he wants to get an MRI on his knee. Even he wants his knee examined further, right? When you have older fighters who start to have chronic injuries, right, you need to ask yourself, wow, how bad off is that knee? Right? When guys are taking breaks to have surgery, that's not that good a sign. Right? The problem with Janady Golovkin, in my opinion, is we've only seen a portion of the game needed for him to be a complete fighter. Yes, he's great on his front foot. Yes, he's great throwing hooks. Yes, he's great backing up guys, having them in the corner. Right? We haven't seen him dealing with clinches. We haven't seen him on his back foot. Right? Talking about a Janady Golovkin jab, I mean, how many jabs has Golovkin thrown? Right? We just don't know what happens when he actually has to show a lot of boxing skills. Right? Let me also point out, too, as you look at the sparring tape from Chris Eubank Jr. versus Carl Frotch, just understand, sparring isn't real life right it's fight preparation it's not the fight we know from real fights from seeing Carl Frotch and things like the rematch against Mikel Kessler that Carl Frotch has an excellent jab we know that in the sparring tape obviously Carl Frotch is working on other parts of his game you'll even hear a trainer yelling instructions as that sparring tape goes forward don't look at that sparring tape and reach the conclusion that Chris Eubank Jr. is ready to take on Carl Frotch. Right? He's certainly ready to spar with Carl Frotch in the fight preparation world. Right? Whether or not he's ready to fight Carl Frotch in the real world is an entirely different question. Okay? Pay attention to the names. Billy Joe Saunders, Chris Eubank Jr. Just understand that there are some 20 year olds, some 20 somethings, doing a lot of good work at 160 ish. Right? Don't be led to believe that the only fighters that exist are the old guard. Right? Quillen, Golovkin, Martinez, and Cotto, they're more guys than that. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.